Welcome to another quick test. Today is the national launch of three cars for Toyota. Uh, this is the Prius Plus. There's also the Verso, which is beside me, and there's the Verso S. So we're gonna go on the Prius Plus first. Uh, I've been out in the Verso already. It's actually not, it's not bad. It's a quite a big car. Now, handbrake is on the bloody floor. Of course it is, where else would it be? Now this is a Prius, but seven seats. Uh, or so they say, seven seats. But uh, being honest with you, those back seats look more like emergency seats than real ones. Um, uh, there's a couple of features in this one, mind you. This is a Prius, it's just kind of, lengthened uh sorry i'm in the four seasons hotel and you have to go around the houses to get out of the place um this one has a few uh features in it like i have a hood like you see in the other prius as well where it has a my speed is up in front of me and uh i have that huge big uh, thing across the middle which tells me all sorts of information like the time my trip whether I'm in EV mode or whether I'm in uh, uh, power mode. All sorts of things. Very quiet, I'll give it that. Uh, and it does seem to hold the EV mode longer than the hours did, strangely. Uh, this, this one seems to be able to hold that, that EV feeling all the time. Uh, completely different center console. There's a petrol engine to cut in now. Uh, completely different central control. It's huge. It's right up here. It's right on top of everything. And uh, makes for a great armrest. I'll give it that. I also have this rather funky roof, which folds in on itself. Which I can open and close there. It's quite nice. Uh, same Prius steering wheel has been in for a while now. It's quite nice. I've, I've got different controls. I can actually control the temperature of the car, strangely, from that one. Uh, we turn that to auto. We turn down to about 19, maybe. 19 and a half. I feel like a 19 and a half morning. Uh, sorry, I still have my man flu, which seems to be going on for bloody months at this stage. Uh, my voice is all kind of screwed up. Uh, there's a cyclist being arrested over there by the Gardaí, probably for making some stupid junction turn or something, not obeying the traffic lights. Um, this is very solid. It's very on Prius. Um, mm. I always found the Prius to be very light. Everything's lightened in the car. It always feels like, you know, everything in the car is lighter than a, than a normal car because they want you to, you know, use the uh, electric engine as much as is humanly possible. And that's a good thing. But this one actually doesn't feel that light. It feels quite solid and lovely, um, soft dashboard. And I have a hood. I can turn the hood on and off again, yes. I can adjust the hood. What's that? Don't pull that. Anyway, don't pull that because that'll open the bonnet. You don't want to do that in traffic. Um, stuck in the traffic lights. I have two glove boxes. Now, the big question is uh, back seat. Is there a back seat at all? There is in the middle row. The, the last row appears to be more of um, an emergency row rather than an actual, you know, place you're going to put people in permanently as a seven seat car. It doesn't doesn't actually do that well as a proper seven seat it feels much more of a kind of five seat that has two emergency seats in the back and i suppose that's kind of where it needs to be because i mean what's the verso for if this was a proper seven seat the verso then would, wouldn't stand a chance because there'd be no point in buying a verso if this was seven seat it was just two seven seat cars there's the petrol engine now you get a bit of noise there yeah yeah okay i still haven't made that sound any better <laughs> Then you see it's not a sports car. You can't be you can't be testing this as a sports car because it's not. There's a embassy registered seven series doing about ten different maneuvers in front of me. Here he goes down that way. That CD on the back, I think that's an embassy registered one, isn't it? That's the keys rattle. I was wondering what the rattle was. The keys in there, yeah. Uh, of course, you don't need the keys in the Toyota at all. You just have a power button in front. You just press that, and away you go. That's that. Mm. Yeah, different gear stick. Um, still weird looking, just different. It's a strange car. Uh, I like this more than I like the Prius. This is not, it's a different car. It's hybrid, of course. Uh, being a Prius, it is a hybrid. But it does offer a few more choices, I suppose. You have an emergency seat or you have a very big boot. Really one or the other. You know, 
uh, you're not going to, other than kids really, all I can see that's going to actually fit in the back row of seats. That's no bad thing. I'm not saying that's a, that's a bad thing. There's very, very few actual seven seat cars on the market. So there's no point in, in, um, in saying it's a proper seven seat. There's actually very few of them. Even, you know, you have to go up to VW Charan, uh, Ford Galaxy, you know, those kind of cars to get full seven seats. And even they aren't really proper seven seats. Um, so the Verso would be the nearest thing to that seven seat, and I'll be going out in that later on. We're going to fill in that one as well. But this is the first one I wanted to see because it, I like these technological cars. I like cars that you know have a kind of technology edge to them. Now, of course, I have the the um, touchscreen radio here in the middle, uh, which I take and I can turn on audio off. And what's that one doing? Right, that's it. Right. Now, now, shut up, wherever you are. I don't know. Sat nav, sat nav. No, no map system not installed what a shame there is bluetooth though uh, i do have that media i like this little console there's a gap in the middle of it and underneath that i have a usb port and a 12 volt power supply mm, not bad now i certainly think it is more than i think of a prius as as a you know a five seat sort of a car plenty of room in the boot when you put down the two back seats you got a fairly decent sized boot when the two back seats are up the boot is quite small as you can see from i know i've already filmed my camera bag in the boot which you see kind of fills the boot it's not it's not that big a backpack either it's big enough but it's not very big it's very quiet very refined over the little bumps i'm hitting here it's very refined um it feels like a bigger car than maybe than it is, actually. Hmm. I'm impressed. So uh, that is test one. I don't. I haven't had the prices running yet. I'll, I'll update it. I'll, I'll put it in text at the bottom maybe when I see the prices come up. Uh, this is the all early morning stuff. This is before any press conference or anything else. I barely, barely got a cup of coffee in me yet. You know, and I've already been out in two cars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Verso, which is absolutely enormous. Um, uh, it feels quite big inside. It's fairly big in the back as well. Uh, although, when the, all seven seats are up, the boot isn't much bigger than the Prius, which is a bit weird. I thought it was going to be a bigger car, a much bigger car. Um, nonetheless, this is a two-liter diesel. Um, Toyota's message today was very, very much... Uh, we are going to give you a car for every possible outcome of your needs <laughs> and in every price bracket and so of course the RAV4 is coming this year as well which is going to uh, give us even more choices when it comes to which Toyota you want to buy now obviously Toyota are getting back into the game from a lot of different angles and looking at their price list today they have everything from Verso S up to the Prius Plus, which is going to be every kind of car you could ever possibly want. That's pretty good. Um, it's nice to have that massive amount of choices from Toyota, but this Verso seems like a very clever car. It's completely redesigned. There's over 400 new parts, according to what they said there, which is a, not just a model refresh, it's basically a new model, um, but it is still counting as a refresh, midlife crisis refresh. Uh, I like the dashboard, I like the, the speedos, our manual speedos, but they're canted out to the left a little bit, off centre, um, which gives you a different sort of aspect. Plus, the rev counter is, is on its side, so um, takeover is straight up, basically. Good pickup, nice torque, nice bit of torque there from that 2.0-litre diesel. Uh, coupled to a 6-speed box. I have dual zone climate control on this one, a touchscreen radio, reversing camera, which is all pretty good. Uh, loads of controls on this very luxurious feeling steering wheel, which I do like that. Uh, this one has airbag safety, it's very paramount of course. Airbags all the way down to the back uh, for every single passenger in it. Sorry, I didn't adjust my mirror, it's silly. Um, a nice high seating position, I feel quite high up on the road. Uh, looking down on other cars, there's actually a VW Touran in front of me, uh, and I feel quite taller than that car, which that's quite a tall car. Um, nice and responsive, nice to be in something that isn't, you know, a hybrid style. Uh, 
that's quite cool. It was quite a big car, though. It feels like a big car, you know. Balls Bridge traffic. This area is called Balls Bridge, kind of. Uh, all the embassies around here, the US embassy, the English embassy, they're all, they're all out in this direction. Um, it's a very upmarket part of town. The launch has actually been carried on in the Four Seasons, which is the name of the hotel is there, which is a very executive hotel as well, old fashioned and executive. It's very quiet right now. I'm ticking over now. Uh, 1500 RPM. 55 kilometers an hour, fourth gear. It's quite nice. Traffic lights. It's very solid. It feels very solid, very refined, very, um, very, you know, tough, like it's gonna last for years and years and years. I quite like that idea. Pleasure room in the back. I like the way that all the seats are individual, that you can fold them down individually. You see how the middle one dropped at the moment and the two rear ones. Uh, my fear is that it's not a true seven seat, so I'm not too sure whether it actually would fit proper adults in the back. They say that it's meant the rear, last rear leg room is meant for someone who's 170 centimeters tall, 1.7 meters, or I have no idea what that is in feet and inches. Um, but in fairness, I'm six foot one, uh, and I'd struggle to fit in that back, the last row of seats, which I know it's not designed for me, it's designed for really kids in the last row, adults in the second row, adults in the front. You know, it's not really designed for a full-size adult to drive all the way as far as Cork and back. Like. Um, so I could forgive that, because really there isn't, I mean, if you want a proper, real deal, full-size seven-seat car, you need a van with back seats. You know, <laughs> you just do. You do something like a big caddy life or something would be the only thing that's actually a true real deal all adult seven seat car eight seat car or whatever size it is or whatever size seat it is so you'd have to kind of go into a passenger van to get full seven seats but this is probably as close as you're going to get to a real deal seven seat car it is very solid i do like that two liter engine it's very it's very pleasant pulls well in every single gear uh, it's intuitive in its in its kickdowns. It's not too noisy, even though I've got above three thousand revs there. Very smooth, yeah. Nice smooth gear change as well. The gear stick is mounted very high up, which is uh, you know it's it's in front of me rather than below me, and I kind of like that. It's uh, you know in in front of you like that. It's it's easy to kind of lift your arm off the armrest and just change gears. Makes life very simple, very easy, nice switch. The throw is uh, long enough, but you'd expect that in a kind of standard passenger car. Throttle response is even. Steering is nicely weighted, nothing too crazy. The thing is, it does feel like quite a big car. It's not, uh, you know, it feels bigger than a Venzes. Um, much bigger than a Venzes. It feels much broader, much wider, much longer, much taller. Tons of headroom, as you can see. Uh, it is uh, very good. Now, I suppose a little disappointment is that the entry level model of this does not get the touchscreen radio, reversing camera, Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff. It is standard from the next level up, which is probably the level you're going to buy. Most people don't really buy the entry level of any car uh, unless it's going on to fleets, which is unusual. Um, so, you do get quite a few little bits and pieces attached. This is quite a pleasant place to be. I'm, Toyota have come up in my estimation, because last week I actually spent a week driving an Yaris hybrid and an Aorus hybrid. Um, and I was very impressed with the build quality inside, the quality of materials, that kind of solid feel is starting to come true now. And this really does have it. This really does have that really solid, you know, everything's put together incredibly well. Toyotas generally are, but you know, this just has that feeling attached to it as well. I quite like that. Uh, no complaints, even the A-pillar isn't really that big, because it's split in the middle, it's got a little window. The Verso S, I'm going to save for a full review, there just isn't time in, in a review for three cars. Uh, Verso, very good, very capable, very big, um, it's a nice place to be. Uh, the Prius Plus is actually pretty good, it feels a lot better than a Prius. Uh, Materials have been improved inside, layout has been improved. 
uh, center console is where to keep the batteries now um, very clever very clever car again um, but this one this is this is the one I think is the one you probably need to look at uh, Verso looks like a really decent offering as a car um, Toyota finance of course is available if you look at, at any of the dealerships they do actually have finance there is plenty of room to maneuver and there's never really been a better time to buy a car in Ireland at the moment because the specs are really high the quality of the cars are really high and the price is really low and that's the thing almost every car manufacturer has a low price car you know there are plenty of choices out there as well but Toyota seem to be bringing a blunderbust of cars in the next wee while this is three cars in the one launch recently was at the Yaris and the Auris launch um, uh, and the RAV4 still to come you know so there's still a huge amount of growth going on within the Toyota group for the amount of cars they actually have so until the next one make sure you like comment subscribe all that sort of stuff thanks very much for watching it's always appreciated I do read every one of your comments and I do um, answer any questions you have I'm always there so if you've got questions stick them in the comments uh, don't email me directly because that's very hard to answer I might be answering the question again it's twice uh, stick them in the comments at the bottom I can answer them there straight and everybody sees the answers that's that's brilliant you know that's a handy way of doing it um, any questions stick them in the comments don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one